are joining us by uh, Facebook Live. Um, we're very happy that you have decided to join us. Uh, I'm Steve Hoskins, president of Missouri APCO, and uh, we're going to do roll call of the officers. Zach, can you do that for us? Uh, sure. Steve? I'm here. JR? Here. Uh, I'm here. Let's see, we got Cheryl's not here. Um, Roger? I'm here. Matt? Here. Steven? Here. Andy Bailey's not here. Don Moore's not here. Sarah Lynn? Here. Angie? Here. I think that's it for me. Okay. All right. Um, the President's Report, the um, um, International Conference is coming up in August. We will be meeting with other presidents of the, the chapters. Um, we have a, it's kind of a non-APCO sanctioned meeting. They, they help support us a little bit, but it's actually the presidents of all the chapters that decide to start getting together every year so we can discuss what's going on in our various chapters and our states and kind of figure out what's going on um, with the um, some of the changes we made actually here for example our our regional representatives we, we now call regional ambassadors we actually took that idea from the North Carolina chapter that's something they had done um, it's also where we got the idea to start looking at Facebook Live, some of the other technical things we're starting doing. So kind of looking forward to that to see what else is coming about that people are doing. Uh, a number of us that are, are going to uh, to be there in Baltimore for the for the conference. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to come back to the next meeting and, and bring some, some new and exciting information and, and news back to you from our uh, national chapters. Um, yeah. well, Facebook Live is a direct result of one of those yes. chapter leader meetings. Yes, that's, um, there's actually two different components that they do every year. They have the President's to President's meeting, um, and then there's also a chapter officer's training class, that, uh, several hours that they go through various things to help us with uh, managing the chapter and, and uh, making sure we know about the resources that are available at the national level to help our chapter and those kind of things. So uh, JR and I and, and Cheryl always try and attend that if we, if we can, depending on schedule. Sometimes people are teaching and can't do that and uh, looking forward to that this year so um, I think we have a legislative report on here later so I'll mm -hmm. talk about that later rather than at the president's report so let's move on to um, item number three start with the secretary's report okay uh, review of the minutes mm -hmm. Roger was trying to pull up the minutes uh, on the screen for everybody to look at, but okay. I think everybody's having internet connectivity issues. Hey, there's my minutes. Okay, uh, if anybody's, has everybody seen it? It was emailed out on TS Connect, so you should have automatically gotten it into your email uh, Monday, Monday evening. Okay, if not, you can review it. Um, haven't updated the membership, as, but as of December 31st, we were at 400, and as of March 11, we were at 436. Um, I don't think there was anything else really to review. Okay. Um, for those in the board and that reviewed that, to see any changes that need to be made for the, the minutes from the last meeting? That was good to make. Okay. And I'll Chair will. Motion to accept. Okay. It's been moved to accept. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right, so moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes of the previous meeting, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, motion carries. Um, Zach, there's a bullet point on here about new members in 2019. Is that something you had information on? Mm -hmm. or? No, I wasn't able to update that. Okay. Technology failed. Yeah, technology <laughs> failed me. <laughs> okay, uh, item number four, treasurer's report. Unfortunately, our treasurer went to Florida to speak to the CPE class. Uh, that is getting ready to graduate, and then they cancel her flight home. So she's still stuck in Florida and won't be home till later tonight. <laughs> and then, uh, I, maybe it's a national thing, but she had internet problems and could not email me the formal treasurer's report. So um, we're going to skip over that for now, just to, to let you know that everything looks good in, in the bank account. Uh, if you recall, we have the, the regular uh, uh, fund in the account, and then we also have the training partnership fund. Everything looks good there. There's actually, I think it was 4000 and something that was in the training partnership fund and actually still had some payments to come in. So we are, we are well prepared to be able to buy the materials and things that we need for the, the training partnership as we, as we go forward. So 
but we will do a formal treasurer's report covering both uh, the period up to now and then from now till the next meeting when we have the next chapter meeting so she would like to remind everybody that those going to baltimore immediately following the general session we're having our moab go picture <laughs> uh, cheryl loves that picture so we will make sure we do that so 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 anybody that does happen to go to Baltimore after the general the membership meeting, we have to go find the big APCO sign that you stand in front of so we can get a picture. So yearly tradition. It is it has become an annual tradition now. So okay, executive council report. Roger. All right, well there's some activity going on in the executive council of APCO. Uh, the executive committee of APCO, which I don't know how well y'all understand governance, so I'll just explain it real quick. Uh, we have the membership, the chapter officers. Uh, and under them, you have the Executive Council, which I represent y'all to the, uh, the International. And then under the Executive Council, you have the uh, Board of Directors of APCO. And then under them, you have the Executive Committee. APCO is a inverted triangle with the President down here and the membership up here. Uh, so we have to remember that when we start talking about APCO. Uh, they have made a policy change. Uh, to not allow additional joint chapters to be created or chaptered by, uh, by APCO International. It's not a bad change for Missouri because, uh, well, we haven't talked about a joint chapter in at yes. least five years to my knowledge. We talked about it about five years ago and that had about a hot second of conversation and we decided no. Um, it doesn't affect our conferences. We will still be able to do the MPSCC as a joint entity. Uh, our legislative task force, all of our committees that work uh, inter, you know, inter chapter, inter association at the Missouri level will be unaffected. Uh, what it does, it doesn't even affect those joint chapters that are already created and formed by APCO and Nina. APCO and Nina is usually the two. Um, doesn't affect them at all. However, there is some sentiment of distaste and displeasure among the membership. I'm going to be attending a meeting of all executive council representatives prior to uh, the executive council's meeting in Baltimore uh, to see what the other states are thinking. Uh, mostly uh, in what I'm seeing, it's uh, the states that are joint already that have a little bit of heartburn with it because it will force them, which they've already been forced to do, I don't know why they're upset, uh, they're forced to keep a separate uh, membership. So if you're the president of the, of the uh, California Joint Chapter of NINA and APCO, you have to hold membership in both associations, which that should not be a problem for anyone no. uh, in reality. So uh, uh, there is a bit of heartburn and uh, they've been, somebody's been seeking me out to talk to California, but I've kind of been blowing that off. So I'm waiting for the executive council representatives to meet early and talk it through and see what kind of displeasure there is. Uh, in talking to the membership, I mean, I think I sent this out about five or six months ago mm -hmm. through PS Connect to the membership. Uh, so I, the only person that's ever talked back to me was Sarah Lynn. She got some stuff at a conference uh, with Nina in Tennessee, I believe, last month or a month before. Uh, there was some displeasure in, 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 uh, in that talk. And I'm not sure where that came from, Sarah Lynn, but just, just general displeasure, I guess, from a, a few. There's a bit of heartburn about it. Um, I expect, since the policy manual has already been changed, I expect that the executive council will vote to make the uh, change to bylaws that's been uh, put forward. Again, that's out on PS Connect for you to look at, also on the APCO International site to look at. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or would like Missouri to uh, consider a different vote, because at this point, I was going to vote yes on behalf of Missouri. So if there is a change to that, y'all need to talk to me or talk to your board officer and have them talk to me, whichever you right. feel most comfortable with. Roger, is there also going to be a quorum vote of the entire body? No. Okay. Well, my understanding is this will be taken care of in the executive council because it's not really bylaws. It's a administrative thing to the policy. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that may be part of the heartburn as well. I'm hoping to hear more when we get out. What I'm seeing from my representatives on the board 
is nothing for Missouri to be concerned about, and I really don't think the other, I mean, it's not taking away any joint uh, chapters, it's just not allowing any more to be formed. And right now, there are none that I'm aware of that are trying to be formed at this time, so, I mean. Well, and I think, and you can enlighten us if it's different than this, but my, my perception was that where this is coming from is there have been times in the past, and there probably will be in the future, when the the National Board of AFCO and the National Board of NINA have uh, disparate views on things. And there's been times when NINA has put forth a, a standard that said this is the way we think technology should go, and AFCO didn't agree with that. And AFCO published something that said, no, that's not the way you should go, it should go this way. Um, so that kind of thing happening, if you're a joint chapter where you're looking to both national leaderships and they have dis different opinions, that kind of puts you in the middle of something there. And um, I think the recognition of that was one of the reasons why they started talking about, you know, we're going to kind of grandfather those that already are, but we don't want to introduce any more. Um, well, sharing of, uh, well, APCO is a, is, a, is, a, is a provider for frequency management and other things as well. So uh, sharing that private information about APCO with non-APCO members is also a well, and I, I was going to add, because I think there's more to it than just the joint um, memberships. There was also something about a letter from AFCO board to NINA board, a stand-down statement for them to, and I think it had to do with that something standard, about... standard, yes. That was about a year and a half ago. There was a standard disagreement, and the two boards got together. And it is resolved, is my understanding now. Mm -hmm. uh, NINA pulled their standard, and they're rethinking it, and AFCO's rethinking it through the national standardized... Uh, what, uh, hey, this, uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, through the national organization, which is all associations combined, plus the government and all those people. So, uh, as I understand it, that has been resolved, uh, and a new standard should be coming out within the next year, but um, I think that did cause some mm -hmm. talk right. amongst the So, if the joint... Uh, membership doesn't really affect us. Do we have to take a stand, or can we choose to not? I can abstain. That's my two choices. I'm just yes. wondering what's the benefit to us as a chapter, one way or another, if, it, if they're saying it doesn't affect us. Well, it doesn't affect us because we have had no discussions of joining, making a joint chapter at this time. There it will affect us in the future. We could never, at that yeah. point, become an APCO NINA 911DA chapter. I just feel like if we vote yes, then we are taking a stance for those chapters that already, like Colorado, I, I know somebody from the Colorado chapter and they're pretty upset about it. But it won't make any changes for Colorado because they're already a joint chapter. They will, not, they will yeah. not be rescinded, they'll be, they'll be safe. So there's a, a yes voice do, doesn't hurt anyone. It just means future joint chapters will not be But, what, I mean, what if we wanted to? I mean, we've already kind of gone that direction with our Train, some of the training and our conference and stuff like that. I mean, it, I, don't, I guess I just don't understand why they don't want people to be. Because of the private information between the various associations. Now, NIA doesn't care, I don't believe, but after But if you have, I mean, if you are a member, I mean, are most of us a member of both? Yes. There's some people that aren't. Right. There's some people that are just members of one or the other organization. You know, that, that was kind of the discussions we had before when we talked about, and it was just a very casual discussion about do we want to look at doing a joint Missouri APCO, Missouri NINA chapter um, in Missouri because we said if you go to the meetings, it's all the same people. Um, most of us are members of both associations, and so some people were, were expressing the opinion that we're kind of duplicating things, and if we just became a single chapter, that that solved all those. Um, but there were some other people, too, uh, specifically on the NINA side, they were very concerned about losing their identity as Missouri NINA. Uh, Missouri AFCO chapter has always been a little bit stronger than the NINA chapter. NINA chapter has gotten much stronger of, of late, had some good leadership. Um, and, and I understand those concerns. And, and so I, I think we want, to, we want to hear from our membership. So those that are on Facebook Live that want to send us uh, notes, let us know. Um, we may put something back out on PS Connect just to remind people that this is coming up so that we can get a good consensus from our, our state of what we want to do. And so we can pass it on to Roger. Ms. Zim? I, I raised my hand, thank you. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> just to let you know, I'm trying to be prim and proper. Uh, it sounds like 
Apple has already made a decision. So, I mean, just about. And, and that's fine, uh, but I'm kind of with Sarah Lynn on, in our area, we're working so well together, we started to go down that path of maybe not duplicating. And if you remember at some of our conferences, we've started to merge conferences, and then we talk about it, and then people start saying, well, but we really have a little bit different goals on some of these organizations. Mm -hmm. So let's have separate meetings. So now we're back to separate, kind of together, and now we're separate meetings again, but still working together. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, I understand if Colorado's upset, it sounds like maybe they have something in the back of their mind that I think people just don't want that op that, that opportunity in the future to be taken away, and I think that's why they're upset. Well, the only but thing I can I, think of for, for states like Colorado, where they do have a joint chapter, so they are already a, an APCO NINA chapter. Uh, so they have the single organization. This, if it passes, it does not affect them, but I could see how they might be concerned of maybe this is the first step. And then exactly. now, two years from now or five years from now, you're going to tell us we can't do this, so we either have to break apart or not be part of APCO. Um, I don't think that that's. I would hope not, because in my opinion, if it came to that, yeah, I think that would APCO. It would hurt APCO. It would, and I don't, and that's why I don't think it's going to happen. There's but I can no understand. About, you know, changing charters. All the charters will remain the same as they are. It's yeah. just that there won't be a new one. So that's all. All it does is prevent the creation of any future joint chapters. Um, so if if this takes place, then in Missouri we would never be able to become a Missouri APCO Nina chapter. I, I don't think it, it hurts either way. Ms. Bonnie? I tend to agree with him and Mr. as well. I mean, why take that opportunity away? I think if we have stayed and we're not endorsing that either side. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. This might be. <laughs> yeah. Well, as, as Chief Person said in a meeting that the sheriff and I were at with him Wednesday, uh, we in Missouri are a very independent state, and we, we don't like it when people tell us what to do. So. Um, I, I kind of get that. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll put something out on PS Connect again and just kind of let some other people tell us. But from, from what I'm hearing and sensing is that the majority of the folks that are here, at least those who have spoken up, yep. uh, would like us to just abstain from this vote, not vote yes or no. So we'll kind of put that out to see if that's uh, truly the consensus. And if it is, then... Oops, sorry. Sorry. We're delayed a little bit. <laughs> I thought, it was <laughs> I thought we're, we're in the review mode already. Yeah, so. yeah I, I think it's... Right. Uh, I will put that stuff on PS Connect once more and okay. uh, give you the... Uh, well, the meeting is next week with the Executive Council, so I'll put out whatever comes out of that as well. Okay. Thanks for the clarification, I think, on that, though. I think there's probably... And I'm sorry, what I was trying to say is it doesn't affect Missouri the way we're currently operating. Right. right. That's what I should have said. I didn't say that earlier. Uh, any other discussion on that? Okay, uh, the 911 Saves Act is back in a big way. They just uh, added it to a uh, bill that is going through uh, national uh, congressional channels now. Uh, they are trying to rewrite language to make the Senate bill and the representative bills uh, match. Uh, if you have not, what you need to do is go out there and write your own personal letters on 911 Saves. If you, if, you, if you go to the APCO International site or if you need it, I've got cards up here calling us into it. It's on our Facebook page as well, and I believe it's on the website as well. So easy to find. Go to 911 Saves. Go in and write your own personal testimonial as to why we should be reassigned, reclassified uh, as responders and not clerical. Yeah. Uh, also, beyond that, have your family, your doctors, your friends, your representatives, your uh, anyone you can think of, Uncle Sal from North Dakota. Go to 911 Saves and write their own personal testimonial to their personal uh, representative and senator in the National uh, Congress uh, to uh, endorse and uh, force uh, occupational analysis basically to reclassify 911 operators and 911 uh, call takers as uh, actual responders, where we need to be classified. Um, if you don't believe in that, don't, don't go. But I can't imagine anyone in this room doesn't. But Call Uncle Sal, call Aunt Georgia, get them all writing letters. It's very simple. You go in and you just send it. Uh, 
and speak out because uh, that vote will probably come up before. The well, the house, the house, the house has passed it, it yesterday. Yeah, so it should come up for the committee review now and then senatorial, the Senate. hopefully this session. Well, the, I'm, I'm not sure who, who thought to do that, but they actually added the House version of the bill to the National Defense Authorization Act, which, you know, that's that's a big bill that you know is going to get passed at one point or another. And so um, they just carried through as, as the amendment to that bill. So now we have to get the Senate side done, and if the Senate side gets it passed and they have a conference <laughs> committee or whatever. The strike that particular amendment. Yes. They have the authority. We have to go they back could. to the House review. Yeah. There's some discussion on the actual wording just like we when we go to the state legislature my god the yes. wording is like hell so <laughs> i can only yeah. imagine at the national level how hellish it is to get the wording back so yeah. that's where they're at now committee's looking at it this session and it should be up before the senate floor at some point we hope we hope it'll go right to the committee and senate yes don't know for sure hope so uh apco is still working at it. our grow i don't know if you know uh, grow is our government relations office uh two attorneys that are really nice guys just because they're attorneys and uh, they are working closely uh, with all those people in the FCC and the other partners in that, as well as the representatives in the Senate that are sponsoring these bills. So uh, working at it very hard. Call Uncle Sal, have him go online. <laughs> Help him write a letter letter if you have to. Any, any questions for Roger in regard to that? I think the next item is yours as well, isn't it? Oh, Missouri Professional Trade Partnership. Uh, the report was issued in March. We did uh, less training last year. I tell you what it is, I believe. Um, our trainers haven't dwindled, but they're busier. Uh, we're busier in our jobs because we're less well-manned and we're less well-resourced. Uh, so that is reducing the number of classes we can actually offer. Uh, also, <coughs> our partnership instructors are less well-resourced. That means the people we're teaching are less well-resourced, so they can't come to class. Uh, they just don't have the resources to get off the console and come in. Uh, so we're seeing a slight decrease in our CEUs. PST1 is staying about the same. Our initial training classes are about the same. Um, we're doing well on our, uh, on our budgeting. Uh, we don't have any expectations of buying new equipment at this point. Uh, so we're just in maintenance mode, purchasing uh, the uh, books, which we do charge uh, the book price plus about 10 bucks. Uh, we pay for travel for instructors that have to go uh, well outside of their area. Um, and um, that's about all we've got on the horizon as far as a monetarily purchasing. Uh, otherwise, we're doing quite well. But the numbers are down for our CEUs, and I think that's just resource. We're just inhibited mm -hmm. by resources right now. It just seems like everybody is short. I know we always say that. We always cry short. But this time, I think we're really right. We are very short on what we've got for resources in how many years have we been doing the partnership now? Partnership? Uh, since nine, let's see, I came up in 2008. The partnership has been going for three years. So since 2005, George Major and uh, the, uh, gosh, what, Mauser put it together in about 2005. Yeah. A few, a few. So I, I think that's a very successful program. I'm More successful than what, what we talked about, the presidents of presidents, they envy what we're able to do as far yes. as training here. Yeah, it's, so it's pretty they incredible. They don't have it. <laughs> yep, it's kind of nice to be able to talk about something that they don't have and let them be jealous for once. And, and some of them are adapting, they're sharing. It's good to share. That's true. Arkansas would like us to just come out of training. <laughs> so would Kansas. Just do their training for them. So would Kansas and Arkansas. They're always fine. Can y'all come over here and train? We cannot. We have decided that it's a liability risk for us to go to another state and try yep. to train them with our state approved courses. It's just mm -hmm. too much liability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Anything else for the nope. training partnership? Unless they have questions. So. Any questions for Roger on the training partnership? If you want to be a partner trainer, just let me know. Yes, please. Yeah. If you if you do think that something you've been thinking about doing, come and come and talk to Roger. I think it's a very <coughs> important thing for our chapter to do. So Okay. Uh Motrit report. Kim is, not here. Kim is not here with us today, so unless someone else has some information about Motert, then we will move uh, on to the next item. And I believe also she is uh, sending out renewals of the, the agency agreements. agreements for everybody because those do need to be updated every so often. All the training is online for uh, the telecommunicator level and the supervisor level. It's all online through uh, 
through uh, SEMA. Sorry. Okay. So the SEMA website. SEMA, FEMA, yeah. It's, 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 it's the actual, you know, like NIMS and all those things. It's all online. That's where you take it up. That's the certified training. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to the technical committee report. Zach. Okay. Uh, April 29th, we launched moapco.org jobs, moapco.org forward slash jobs, which is a free posting site. So um, pretty much you just go on there, fill out a form with some information on your agency, um, where you're located within the state, what your hiring salary is, and what the position's for. It's free. You put on your closing date, it posts it to a spreadsheet. Uh, so since that's been open, we've had 18 postings from around the state, which isn't bad, especially since it's not like well known mm -hmm. that we were doing it. We just kind of did it spur of the moment. So I think that's going to be a good service for us. It's free. It's something we're providing our centers. So that's great. Um, we're currently sponsoring a food and toy drive to benefit local organizations. And it's called Christmas in July. So this came out right around the start of July. I know it was short notice, but <laughs> hey. It's out there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, it's going pretty good. The, the winners are going to be determined by agency size and will be uh, decided based on the total number of donations that they bring in. It's going to go back into your community. So we as the board are not choosing who um, the stuff goes to. <coughs> it's your actual centers are doing that. I do want to do a shout out because I've, I've been trying to follow this stuff on Facebook. Nobody's nobody's biting except for Kenneth PD, which is down in the boot hill, and they're not posting a lot. Raul is doing it too. I know I know Raul and Kenneth are. I'm Rawl doing it, but it's kind of sad. I would not post a picture of what we've accumulated. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can just send me teddy bears. That'd be great. So. Kenneth's been doing this for two weeks, and on Tuesday they posted that they made uh, 1,200 donations. Wow. They've gotten 1,200 wow. donations so far. Yeah, it looks like we've got a winner right there. So they've, they've really jumped on the ball. They've gotten their community leaders involved. They're doing a um, kind of a PR stunt with it where if they make a certain goal on um, baby wipes or something, they get to pie a leader. So they've got uh, their chief of police. They've got a sergeant in there. They've got the mayor is like the top prize. So they're they're really getting involved with this. So I wanted to do a shout out for them. Um, the contest ends on July 31st. You can find all the information on moapco.org forward slash contest. That's where our little bylaw rule is. It's not too late to start. We have two two agency size winners. It's uh, I think it's five to twenty maybe. I think I believe that's correct. Five to twenty is considered a small agency, and then twenty and over is a large agency. And dependent on your size, uh, we do have prizes. You either get a hundred and fifty. I want to say it's a hundred and fifty dollar gift card for food voucher that was approved by the board, um, and then. For the larger agency, I think it's two fifty. It's hundred. It's a hundred and two hundred. Hundred and two hundred. I was wrong. So, <laughs> good notes. Yeah, good notes. Hey, it's been a while since I wrote it. So, so anyway, it's it's going good. Uh, as far as social media goes, our Facebook account we have six hundred and seventeen followers on our Facebook page, which is more than our membership. So that's good. We're getting our our views out there. We've got several uh, followers from other states' leaderships on there, so they're seeing what we're doing as a chapter and putting it out. Um, between June 21st and July 18th, we've got 30 new followers to the page. Uh, our biggest reach was a post for, no. We've had a personal post reach of 3,340 people, which is a 143% increase from the month before, and 164% increased on post engagement from the month before. On Twitter, we have 609 followers, and we're continually posting stuff on there as well. Um, we do want to know things that the membership would like to um, see us use, utilize. Like Peggy said, TikTok is probably not something we're going to do because I'm not making funny videos. <laughs> just from what I've but we might do Instagram. Um, so pictures of the field. Yeah, I mean you can, you can tag. Yeah. 
Yeah, just just see me dancing up there. You have no idea. No. 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 Yeah. So if you if you if you have any ideas about something that we can utilize, could be wearing on a shirt. These guys are great. Have you seen their? I I I, uh, I follow them. And they have lots of great stuff from their town and from the 91 Center. Oh, yeah. oh Springfield. Y'all are fantastic. Oh, yeah. Really good. You probably have somebody paid to do it, but you're being fantastic. Uh, actually, our so yeah, if you guys have any ideas on uh, <laughs> what we, if you have any ideas on what we could do to make our outreach better to the community through technology or social media, let me know. Um, we're, we're always trying. I think that's it. But while, while we're at it, I'd like to take a moment to thank Zach. Uh, Zach has helped in the technology area in both the MPSCC and our APCO chapter. You see all this out here so we can live stream this because Zach did it. Zach took care of it and he's yes. done a wonderful job and I'd like to thank him. Yeah, thank you, Zach. <laughs> yeah, the chair would like to publicly thank him for uh, staying as the chairperson of the technical committee when he became the secretary of the chapter. So now he's doing <laughs> dual roles and uh, um, Maybe. <laughs> hopefully he will continue to do both roles because he's doing them both very fairly well. well. So other duties as directed. Exactly. <laughs> he's a millennial, so you got to force him to talk. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, conference committee. It's actually uh, going to talk about the Missouri Public Safety Communications Conference. Miss Bonnie. Oh. So um, April wasn't able to be here today because she's at uh, kids' ball games. Um, finish up the spring 2019 conference. Uh, there was about 250. October 7th. Uh, yeah, October. October. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That happens in front of my head for something else. But I'm not um, the symposium cost is $110. The director's cost is $110. And combined is $200. And that's good through September 15th. And then there'll be a 30% increase in those. The hotel is $121 per night for single and double. And then it increases $10 for a triple or quad. And those um, prices are also good through the 15th or until the block is gone. And I do know that Sunday before, those rooms are going quickly because there's a ball game in Kansas City. Chiefs game on Sunday. Yeah, I would encourage anyone Everybody's who's planning on going to get their reservation. There's a today. second event as well, so they're like yeah. really full because there's two sporting events going That's on. That's the only problem in Kansas City. They're very, yeah. they're very busy. Yeah. And breakfast is complimentary with your room stay, so you're going to stuff in Austria a little bit. You would know. Um, um, I'll let oh, some possible entertainment they're looking at is a comedy club, an adult arcade, or a band. So it's like when you say adult time. arcade, that sounds dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take it however you want to. Uh, <laughs> just to explain, the adult oh, arcade yeah. is it's a lot of old fashioned arcade games, Pinball. and and it's it's uh, actually in addition to the comedy club, and kids aren't allowed in there. So you you can go in there and not have to worry about a bunch of little kids being in there at the same time you want to. Drink yeah. <laughs> the professionals can go have a good time and relax. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'll let Matt speak a little bit about the vendors because we did fill that up within two days, I think, the vendor. We have. Uh, we did an outstanding job uh, this year with uh, selling out the exhibit space. Um, we've got all 20 of those uh, that were sold. Uh, we've got a total of 17 companies that have sponsored uh, for us this year. Uh, we have one platinum plus, one platinum, three gold, four silver, and six bronze uh, sponsors. We have one company that has never exhibited with uh, the MPSCC uh, in the past that is going to be there. And we have two companies that have not been to our fall conference, um, or two additional companies that have not been to our fall conference. They've been to the spring, but not been with us in the fall. So. Uh, we have a total of three uh, that will be new to the to the fall uh, conference event. <laughs> yes, sir. If we increase the number of vendors we're accepting at the fall. It's twenty bigger than what we're doing. Twenty is the number that we uh, have agreed to. Yeah, and I will tell you after the walkthrough in Kansas City, um, I'm not sure that they've got space for twenty. Um, it's a pretty tight space. Um, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> 
that, that'll be tough, but um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at at this point for this year. Um, what I'd like to see us do is if we are looking at growing our exhibiting space, we probably also need to grow what we're going to have as attendees because the attendees is what drives the <coughs> exhibitors to want to be there, our commercial partners. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to a conference where there was more exhibitors and commercial partners in the room or there than what there were as agencies that were looking at the new products and technology and services they have to offer, but that's usually an upside down type of event. And what happens is, is typically your exhibitors don't see value and they don't come back. And so we're trying to make this more of an intimate environment, and I say intimate on a professional level, um, <laughs> whereas you all have the opportunity to spend time with the commercial partners and actually learning about what new products and services that they have to offer and giving you plenty of time to do so, while also giving value to those commercial partners and seeing the value of having some time to be able to socialize and spend time with the agencies. One of the po most positive feedbacks that we've actually received of recent is our entertainment side of things, uh, our entertainment committee, and that is when we were down at the uh, fall conference in Springfield, uh, we had two outstanding events planned. One that was at Andy B's, and the other one was at Wonders of Wildlife. And the commercial partners said, you know, of any conference I've ever been to over the years that I've been serving in, in a public safety commercial role, those were probably the best events that they've ever been to because they got opportunity to spend time shoulder to shoulder with all of the agencies here in the state just doing fun, entertaining type of um, atmosphere events. And so those are the things that they look forward to of our conference of coming to the state of Missouri. And we wanna hopefully be able to provide that same type of or same level of excitement for them to wanna be here. And I think that shows in the fact that in two days, we sold out of our exhibiting space. Um, and, and that's what I've told each and every one of them. I will tell you, I've got a wait list um, that's been created. So if we have somebody that cancels, we have others that will be definitely stepping forward to register. I've got a few that I will tell you in just a moment um, that are a little frustrated that they didn't get in and wanting us to make exceptions. And of course, I'm not making exceptions. We've got to treat everybody fair and equal. And um, those that got in um, in those first two days um, or who's going to be at our conference. And I think we'll all be excited about who's there and who's participating. Question, yes. For comment. Northwest Missouri, since this is in Kansas City, um, for Northwest Missouri, uh, it would be helpful for me if there's a vendor list that I could send to the sheriffs. Most Northwest Missouri communities that I deal with do not have connections with APCO, so they're not gonna be searching for APCO or anything. But if I send to my contacts a list of vendors, then we might have more participation because it's actually the sheriff and That's the chief of police who go to to purchase stuff like that. I can do that for us in the fall. Uh, I can actually work with Zach uh, from a technology and publishing side to get that probably put onto our website. Yeah. Um, and I would put that on the MPSCC website, not on the APCO or, or NINA mm -hmm. or Directors Association unless they so chose, uh, but getting it posted there. Um, however, it's more difficult to do so in the spring, and the reason why is because we have, um, I will tell you, the last two years at least, um, we've had companies that actually showed up, never registered, and thought that they were a registered company. And so we have people registering all the way up to the day of the conference start. So being able to get a list out like that is much more difficult for the spring. But if I could send it out absolutely. right before the prices go up, that might be a good timing there. block okay. to generate more, especially with Northwest Missouri and Kansas City, this this year is a good year for my area. Okay, yeah. it's a good thought. I'll pass that along to our um, We do have 35 registered so far attendees, so I encourage everyone to register. It's only been open about a week, so it's a new platform. It's a little different, but um, we're working through it. So if you have any issues, definitely contact us. And just so you can plan for the future, Spring 2020 is March 21st through the 25th at Tantera, and Fall 2020 is September 13th through the 17th at University Plaza in Springfield. Can you repeat those dates yes. one more time? Spring 2020, March 21st through the 25th at Tantera, and Fall 2020 is September 13th through the 17th at University Plaza in Springfield, and then we'll go back to Tantera in Springfield.
first Plaza? Downtown. Yes. Mm-hmm. There, oh, by the ballpark. Right? Yeah. 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 They were okay. very high. Can I ask a quick first question? Spring? Sure. Is 256 or whatever it was in the, in the spring, is that down? On it was down by about 20. Okay, so 250 sounds about right to me for yeah. attendees, not yeah. counting the vendors. Yeah. So down by about 20. that's about what we've always had. Okay, either uh, either Angie or I would like to speak on, I'm throwing her under the bus, but either Angie or I would like to speak on the uh, education subcommittee portion. Definitely. Okay. Um, I'm mostly working on the symposium side. Cheryl's focusing on the director side of the education. I have, I, I like, we've got a lot of great um, contributions to classes. We've still got some room on my uh, matrix to fill. So if you have anyone that you've seen instruct, at any conference, any training you've had, and you uh, would recommend them, let me know, reach out to me, and I'll reach out to them, or reach out to them and suggest that they submit papers. But we've got papers coming from out of state and uh, some really good contributions so far, but I could use a little bit more. So think about what you've seen in the past and let me know, and I'll find someone to talk to. Deadline for call for papers is two weeks from today, August 2nd, so still time to get them in. Um, we're kind of excited to announce our keynote too, because uh, I am. <laughs> but I'm excited. But uh, our keynote is uh, Ryan Deadman. Uh, he is a trainer, former dispatcher trainer, um, who is going to speak on surviving and thriving. So going from trauma to non-trauma. Terrificness. Terrificness, sure. Terrificness. So uh, I've been in contact with him a lot um, for like the past three months just because after reaching out he's added me as a friend and stuff and I mean he seems like a really cool guy and he's a millennial ish guy so he's young he's young fresh so he new with great ideas he's an amazing speaker you will not want to miss him and he, he is presenting he has presented and is presenting this year at APCO 2019 so he will he's he's up there so Pretty excited about that. National, international level speaker, actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. Unless anybody else has any questions for Ms. Bonnie in regards to the conference, we'll move on. Uh, next item is the legislative report. Um, hopefully, you've all heard that Senate Bill 291 did pass and the governor did sign it last week. So, that is, is law now. Um, and it had the emergency clause on it, so that meant it went into effect as soon as he signed it. So that, that took care of the, the verbiage that the Department of Revenue had heartburn over. Um, they, there's still <coughs> some issues that we have to work out between the 91 board and, and, uh, and Department of Revenue. Um, Sheriff Cordy is our representative to the, uh, the 91 board, and uh, it's probably a good thing that you don't have something to charge the members of DUR with because they'd be in jail, <laughs> but um, they, they have really made things very quite difficult, but this, this language kind of cleaned up the things that they were hanging their hat on. So um, it should be moving forward. So the, the prepaid sales tax is, is uh, on uh, prepaid minutes is, is in effect. The various counties, you can start educating the retailers that they need to be collecting this the uh, it's now available for your jurisdictions to go to the vote of the people to go up to a dollar for any device that contacts 911 um, along with that just as a reminder to anybody if you are involved in that decision making process for that in order to do that one of the things you have to do is you have to come back to the uh, state board with a plan on consolidation and consolidation simply means uh, anything from shared services where you're you're finding opportunities where you can share networking equipment etc with other agencies to people that have actually done a brick and mortar consolidation so if you've already consolidated for example you're in a county where you only have a single piece app you're, you're consolidated so what you're turning in is saying hey we're, we're we are consolidated um, the good point about doing that is that it gives information to the state board for them to make decisions and to work with um, something we haven't had in the past has been a central point to kind of coordinate data from all of our 911 centers to really gather who's out there, who's doing what, what are they using, um, how many calls are we actually taking, how many seats are there, those kind of uh, pieces of data. We've never really had the opportunity to get that. Now that we've got a strong 911 board in place, uh, we do. 
and uh, they're working on hiring a, an executive director who will serve as the state 911 coordinator, something we also have not had in the state of Missouri, um, which is incredibly important. And um, this, not really so much legislative as it is about talking about the 911 board, but one of the things the state of Missouri is moving forward with is uh, a federal grant application to get some, uh, some dollars from the feds. It's a matching grant that will help us start to build emergency services IP network across the state so that we can actually build that backbone to have um, all of our 911 centers connect and start working towards next generation 911. And the, um, you know, the primary reason for the grant fund and the things that we're doing there is, is to get a, a, a basic level of 911 that's comparable across the entire state. Because we still have 17 counties that if you dial 911, your call is going to go somewhere because the FCC mandates that, but it's just going to ring on somebody's desk phone. There's no trained personnel. There's, there's no 911 system in place. It's just a phone call. And so we want to get those counties, and a lot of them are very small counties, counties that have a population of 2,000 people. They just don't have the wherewithal to put in a 911 system. But by building this infrastructure, we can then find other counties that are doing it and doing it well that can take those people on um, where they can start helping them in building a consolidated system. Um, you know, it, it, we have examples around the state of doing that. The, uh, the ACCD system up to the north of Kansas City, um, Andrew Clinton, Caldwell, and DeKalb counties, and they've had a joint system where the four of them shared network infrastructure for years. Uh, they're well a ahead of their time in that respect. And now that this kind of movement is happening, they're starting to have other counties contact them to say, hey, what would it take for us to join you? And that's kind of what we, we see is, is probably going to happen based on this legislation and finally getting this passed. And uh, um, one, of the, one of the other things in regards to the legislation is uh, we're not going to put it forward for a vote today. We'll probably do that in the fall when we uh, have our, our chapter meeting and the board's going to discuss it some more. But we've accomplished a great deal with our lobbyist, with Scott Penman. And so we've had some very preliminary discussions with him about possibly paying a much smaller fee and just having a retainer where he just basically kind of keeps his ear open. If he hears something that affects us in the 911 industry, he can bring it to us. And if we decided something that we need to work on, then we'd have a contingency clause that we could then increase his fee and, and have him go to work for us on a full-time basis. Um, it, it's something that the three presidents have discussed. Uh, the, the, the other two presidents, Missouri 911 directors and Monina presidents and I are actually meeting next week. That's one of the topics of the discussion as to what do we think is appropriate. Um, so we will bring that back to you as the membership once we uh, decide what we think we want to try and do and, and come back to our memberships to get approval for that. Um, I think it's wise. There's, there's a lot of things that he didn't necessarily work on directly for us yeah, he brought to us, and, and we also would occasionally have questions about something. Um, how many of you heard about the bill that did get passed this session on the loggers bill? I see a couple of you. So it's only for, I think it's third class counties. So yeah, the, the loggers bill changed the retirement age for telecommunicators to 55, like law enforcement, but as Steve said, it only applies in third class counties in the city of Cape Girardeau. But once you get that passed and it's there, then it's a whole lot easier to go back at another session and start making that so that it applies to other telecommunicators around the state. And so I, I think I have been involved in the strategy, but I kind of see that's probably what's happening is at some point they're going to say, hey, you're already doing it now for these people. Why can't you do it for us? Um, but that's the kind of thing that um, uh, why I think we need to have a lobbyist on retainer so that we have somebody that can that can tell us when they hear things or if we know somebody's working on a bill like that, like the loggers bill, and he hears about somebody who has some opposition, we might not know about that opposition where we could do anything to try and counter it if we don't have somebody that's on, on the hill there at Capitol that can help us with that. Jim? Quick question. Um, what kind of a time frame is our contract on with him? I cannot remember. Yeah. Yeah. So we're very timely, very timely with the conversation of the three association presidents. Yes. Yeah, the last couple of years we voted on at the fall meeting. Yeah. And so since we since we are 
since our bill that we, the three associations, were really focusing on did pass, you know, it, it's we don't feel compelled to have to to renew the contract. We can enter into a different contract with them, so it doesn't have to necessarily be like October first. It could be a little bit later. Uh, you know, in the past we were trying to get get him working for us, so we pre five bills and and. Uh, it was a little more sense of urgency, I guess it should be. So, uh, anybody have any questions or, or comments about the legislative efforts? Great job. Okay. Awesome. Before we move on, can I just? Oh, yes. Uh, I was just going to mention um, Harry's Law, which is a national um, law. If you're not familiar with it, um, it actually goes into effect February of 2020, and what it is is a requirement on multi-line telephone systems uh, or PDX type systems, a requirement to not have to dial a number to get to an outside line. So you wouldn't have to dial 9, 911 to call 911 or 8, 911. Um, so in the uh, Mark region, we're starting a campaign to reach out to school districts, our local governments, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Hotel and Motel Association, to let them know about this requirement that goes into effect um, February, and um, would encourage you guys to do uh, the same thing so that they they know about that, so that people like we've changed it at our phone in our office, so you can dial nine nine one one, or you can just dial nine one one. So it would work either way. What's the name of that law again? Carrie K A R I Carrie's Carrie? law. Okay. Carrie's law. Yeah. Anything else for legislate? We didn't have it on the agenda because it just kind of slipped my mind, but uh, we want Sheriff Cordy to give us a report on the, the state board. So Steve covered quite a bit of it. Um, probably the, the state board has been really, really busy the past few months. If anybody's ever been involved, like the formation of a new district, like like a you know you know a new 911 district or something, that's basically what the state board's been at right now, uh, up until well even. For about the past three months, we've been meeting oftentimes bi-weekly with subcommittees in between, trying to get everything up and going. You know, the legislation's been passed, but there was no money to do anything with or anything else. So that's, you know, the money's starting to come in off the, off the prepaid, and we're, we're, we're moving forward with a lot of different things. Um, I know it's put out over P PCS Connect and a lot, of other, a lot of other formats. We've been having these regional meetings this month. Um, you know, part of the, the original statute, which well, I won't go into the backstory of that because I think a lot of us know it, but, but it was required that we're going to have these uh, no more than 11 regions or 11 uh, regional coordination, coordination centers, centers yeah. identified. Um, so we've been going around in each one. Uh, Alan Wells and Rodney Her Sheriff Rodney Herring up in Grundy County is also on the board. They were on the on that committee and they put together a draft map. We've been going around. All over the state. In fact, they're, they're, I think the last one is going on right now down in southwest, southeast Missouri. Uh, the last one of those meetings, and we're just trying to get a feel back from everybody. Um, you know, are you in the right region? Um, I've been to two of them. I think uh, Steve's been to a couple of them. You know, it's it, it, and like you said, it's everyone's strongly independent, um, and there's different. There, the different regions have different kind of ideas on what they want to see. It's kind of like he mentioned earlier about the uh, something that was brought up, you know, in Northwest Missouri, they got those four counties that are working together. You know, they're they're already ahead of the head of the curve. The state's trying to play catch up with what they've already done up there. I know Northeast Missouri, we've got some uh, centers that are linked together the same way, also. So that's you know that's our long term goal. Uh, short term goal is you know getting these regions set up. If we need to make more regions, we have that flexibility. If we need to move counties from region to region. Um, if you haven't seen it, the, the, if you haven't been to one of the meetings, I've got a small copy of the map here. Um, we're going to be putting that on some sort of, probably on the website, yeah. coming up pretty soon, uh, just for some final comments on it. And it, the nice thing about this, this isn't set in stone. It's, it's not like you know, Homeland Security regions or Highway Patrol regions that, you know, these, these are things the board, if there's a reason to move someone from one to the other, we can make that happen. It, it doesn't take a whole lot, you know. If you're in one region and you're partnering with one in another region, you know that's we can we can make those changes. So that's 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 the nice part about it. Um, one of the other things too, we were tasked with trying to what these regions are supposed to do and look like. Um, we're trying to keep it as much keep the state out of local business as much as possible. 
Um, but it's kind of interesting. You know, we were, at, we were at one meeting this earlier this week where they, you know, they were, well, we want you to tell us what to do and how you want us to organize the region. And, and other, other regions are taking it on themselves and running with it, you know, but don't tell us what to do, what to do but we'll make it happen. And that's kind of kind of interesting thing. They, you know, the, the region, well, it's region seven, which is St. Louis region, which, you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, you've got 200 municipalities, one, or 150 municipalities in one county, so they don't believe in consolidation at all, but, you know, <laughs> of anything. But, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're just like, some of the input from that meeting was, well, give us more guidelines on what you want us to do. It's like, well, you know, what's, what, what fits you? Because what, what fits St. Louis or Kansas City is not going to fit Northwest, Northeast Missouri. So um, there may be some guidelines coming down of what we, you know, but we're really wanting to keep this on a local level so that we can work with the local regions what's best for them. So um, that's the big thing going on. Like, and like Steve mentioned, you know, we're working on hiring process for a state director, which is going to be uh, get a lot of this stuff going. Um, the other big thing is, you know, we've started collecting the sales tax or the land or the prepaid phone tax. Uh, the board's goal is to hopefully start getting that money returned back to the jurisdictions September, October time frame. Um, part of that delay is some issues we're having with getting the information we need from DOR. But one of the other things too is we wanted to see three full months of revenue coming in. Um, there's a minimum, you know, Charter County gets a minimum of 65% back, everybody else gets a minimum of 25% back. Um, the discussions on the board, we would like to see that 25% hopefully be higher than that, than the minimum, but we wanted to see three months worth of revenue before we decided what we are going to set that rate at. One of the nice things about this, the law that got signed last week, is that originally we can only change it once every three years. Now we can adjust it every year for the first five years, if I remember correctly. So that gives us the opportunity to help gauge this, because like I said, we still don't know how many counties are or aren't collecting. DOR, prior to, the, prior to the law passing, had no authority to go out and see if people were collecting. Now it's part of the law that's for them to do. So we're, we're not wanting to get tied in too hard until we see how much revenue is coming back, but it's, I don't know. What, I have a question. Yes. You talk about this tax is for Missouri and it's on prepaid phone service, correct? Mm -hmm. right? And then, then, then Telco is just. That's what I'm telling you. I, so your first three months of revenue may not be really what your revenue. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Right. right. We know that. And we, we've also, there were some counties that opted out that submitted money that we had to turn around and send back to them. It, it's, I hope, like, like I said, this, this new law gives DOR a little more direction on what they, what, what they need to be doing. So hopefully we can kind of streamline some of this so but yeah our the boards are discussing it the last couple meetings is hopefully to get this some get this money back out to the, the local jurisdictions clarification that is your wireless provider <laughs> take sure of that is that something that the uh, 911 service board is aware of that they're potentially they i called them i said why did my bill go up a dollar and 30 cents why and i talked to them and they said it was because you passed your state passed the law and you will have to read your and, Missouri state okay. and they gave me the website to go to to read my law. You, you don't live in one of the counties that passed the wireless the any device charge in April, do you? What county do you live? Buchanan. No, they want they didn't Buchanan. put that to the voters. Well, that, just, that was the other possible yeah. explanation. But on that, but that being said, it's just like for years, most of us, our cell phone bills, there's been a thing for 911 that didn't really go to 911. Yeah, but, but if you pressed, it was like, well, that's for us to build our infrastructure. Yeah. 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 It might be worth taking back to at least the 911 service board. So that that, that's there. what I'm giving yeah. you. It, right, it, thank it, you. Because yeah. it may affect your funds and decisions you're making yeah. going forward while, because apparently the phone companies don't have this figured out. Or well, it yeah, may yeah. not affect the funds, but it's going to affect what the public perception is. Yeah. Because if they're sharing that information out there and you're a FirstNet um, yeah. subscriber, then you're going to have other FirstNet subscribers that are probably also calling about the mm -hmm. same service. Right. 
Just because it's HD, we don't that square away. No problem. <laughs> that, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And I just didn't want you guys making no. decisions yeah, on it. They're, they're aware of it. You're not the first person that has told us that that okay. does not okay. have prepaid minutes that is being charged a tax and wondering yeah. why. So. Yeah. I believe the intent of the 9-1 service board in the percentage that they're going to return to the counties is, is part of this bill is your sales tax, if you're a sales tax county, it's not being collected on the prepaid. Okay, so, so the intent of the service board is to return a, a big enough percentage that didn't impact your sales of, of the prepaid tax to make you whole from what you should be losing of sales tax. And I, and I also, as the sheriff said, uh, if you get a fairly large check the first time around, don't count on that every month till it levels out and we get it figured out. Yeah. yeah. So. And there's, there's, um, uh, it is, it's each county's or jurisdiction's responsibility to educate their retailers that they're supposed to collect this. So for example, in Jackson County, which is the most populous county in the state, they haven't done that yet. So Jackson County is collecting very little money so far. Um, that's going to go up tremendously once they educate all the, the retailers. Uh, DORs, and, and they're correct, but they're like, we, we have no responsibility to tell anybody. We have no responsibility to go ask anybody for anything. We just simply take in the money they send us. So, but me working with phone companies, right, and contacting them, letting them know, since we have so many counties and, uh, you know, we notify them of what the either percentage is or the amount is or whatever. I find frequently if it's not the carrier, it's their third party provider that they use that is the collector and remittance company. And so, I mean, I would think it might be helpful if you would be willing to share that portion of your bill and potentially reach out to that company or their yeah. provider well, to just say, hey, that's you need to look especially at this. with it being FirstNet who yeah. wants to serve the public Everybody. safety in the entire state. Right. <laughs> and I they can't, can't get it straight. I can't get past customer service, first call, how can I help you? I can't get past them. I don't know. Your carrier is at t right? Yes, it, it, it's, it's FirstNet. Oh. Yeah. FirstNet, first yeah. AT&T. Yeah. Yeah. by AT&T. Yeah. That's right. That's why I thought. I mean, because we have, we have 911 liaisons, um, like Justin Vaughn at at and He's not wireless, but he's doing a lot of the first net activity. And so, I mean, I feel like we have people within the company that are on our 911 side that we could potentially reach out to. And right, you can, yeah, I'll give you my bill if you need it. <laughs> Whatever you need. Yeah. I just think it'd be, yeah, really be a great idea. idea. Get with me afterwards here. Okay. It says $1.37 thirty-seven is what it was? $1.30, I think. Yeah. There's no one along. Oh, and those that opted out mm -hmm. have, have a chance to opt back in should they choose to, correct? That's yes. correct. And if they don't, no money. Correct. No money and no right. no access to grant funding in the future either. There is a deadline. There is no a deadline. So, yeah, deadline. So, so those counties that opted out should be receiving a letter, and only the counties that opted out <laughs> well, should be receiving a letter soon from the 9 service board explaining what they have to do to have that pop back, back in. I I it, it, I yeah, it will have to be a vote of the county commission. Just like it was here. Right, exactly. But once the, once the funds are distributed, they are now going to be distributed to the, the emergency board. And that's the, the big thing board. with the statute. It clarified that, that any... Money, if there's a 911 board, provider, whatever it is, the money's going to them. If there's not, then it will go to the county. The governing body of the 911 service. So. Is it, wasn't, when's the deadline? Was it November? I, I thought well, it was I read November 15th. I believe so. That, that sounds not, right. That's what yeah. the, yeah. It's, it's, I, it's actually, sometime it's, in it's November. In I can't tell you the day. Yeah, that's not from us. That's, that was actually the statute. So the deadline is the one that got, just got passed. Any other questions? It, it add to that if you opt back in, then the collections in your county are supposed to start then January, January one, first, right? Twenty twenty. Like yeah. <laughs> well, you you would be amazed. There's a county in extreme southern Missouri yeah. that has five thousand people that took in as much as 
that supposedly 40, our county no. did. Yeah, that. <laughs> but DOR can't tell us why that is. Yeah, There's something there. We're not sure something what's going on in that county. Is, is there a camp down there training people? I that's what I, I wonder. <laughs> well, I've thought the exact same thing. So, the, so the three, the sword of the, Lord. the two sheriffs and the one police chief on the board are really questioning that, as well yes. as everybody else. So, yeah. <laughs> this strange picture. Something. Yeah. It's, any other questions for Sheriff Cordy? Regards to number one board. Okay. All right. Then we will move on. Um, pro chart report. Okay. Well, pro chart's kind of twofold. Um, I'm not sure if y'all even know what ProChart is, but it's our human resource training uh, legislation. Uh, ProChart in APCO International is a lot of things. Uh, we've done those things for years through the legislative uh, task force, through the service board representation, through our partnership of training, all these things. So it's not like we're lax in taking care of any of these things, it's just that they've been done a different way. I have been your chair of the Pro Ch Missouri Pro Chart Committee since I became president uh, back whenever that was. Uh, and still I am because the current president is too busy with legislation to be doing that sort of thing and dealing with it. Plus, I'm the group leader for Pro Chart International. So uh, I have an in with that committee at the international level. Uh, we've been talking a lot about maybe doing something different in Missouri, uh, maybe developing our own real with membership uh, committee for ProChart because it is a good deal. It's, it's just a matter of, you know, it's social media, it's putting out the word, it's uh, recruiting, it's, it's so many things uh, that we are already trying to do that um, uh, maybe we can do better, I guess is the way to say it. Um, and maybe the better way to do that is to establish a ProChart committee. Um, I don't know where we want to really, uh, I'm sorry, we have a ProChart committee, but establishing a really staffed working ProChart committee. Um, so I don't know, I've been talking to JR and Steve and I don't know if I have a good concept of what y'all would like to see happen. I, I think perhaps the thing to do is to sit down as a, as a group yeah. and discuss, I mean, we've done some discussions on PS Connect and that sort of thing, uh, but you know, maybe just sitting down and talking at the, uh, sometime between now and the conference or something and figuring out what we really want to see done and then giving somebody that chair position other than me <laughs> to make that happen uh, would be the thing to do. Uh, do you all agree with that? Yeah, we can. Yeah. I mean, we can take action we today. Can together, but we can take action today chair. and I can start recruiting, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes. Um, the other thing ProChart is going to be doing uh, is we stole this from the International. Missouri uh, Teammates in Actions, you may, hopefully you've seen APCO International's Teammates in Actions. They've had... Uh, about six uh, people recognized for their everyday hero uh, type activities. Uh, we're going to start that in Missouri. The board has already approved it. I intended to have flyers and handouts and all sorts of cool stuff today, but I have failed. <coughs> um, I bought a new house. The wife wanted to move, and by golly, that was priority. So, uh, sorry, hon, if you're watching. And uh, so I've I've been like loose, and plus Lori, who's my boss, she may not be here, but she, she has given me a lot of crap here. You mean back there in the back row? It's like every day I turn around, it's like, hey, Roger, you need to do this. <laughs> so so uh, I, I've been a little pressed, and I, I've, it's written. We know The board has approved it. We know what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that out through our social media with Zach's help, uh, and we'll put that out to y'all. And what it is is we're recognizing our day-to-day -day workers for things they do. It doesn't have to be they saved 15 lives, it's they worked hard, they did a good thing, they thought outside the box, they handled critical incidents, they did things that we do every day, and we just want to recognize our membership for that. So it doesn't have to be a member of anybody, it's, uh, it's, they don't have to be a member of APCO or MOAPCO or 911 or NINA or anything. Just recognize them. Uh, the process for sending that in will be very simple online, uh, so millennials will love it. And, uh, should be a pretty cool thing. We will recognize them here, and then we will see to it that those recognitions go forward to APCO International to feed the international recognition uh, program that they have. Uh, sort of like we do with awards, but different. It's not an annual award. It's recognition for doing good work, thinking outside the box, helping that, going outside the, going uh, above and beyond to help that one person on the phone uh, get to where they were supposed to be going. Uh, that's what we're looking for. It's recognition, not award. There's no money involved. Um, 
we will we have a we will have limitations on what we're going to spend. The only ex money we're going to spend for Moapco is just perhaps a little travel to get a regional ambassador or one of our board members out to actually uh, give you a certificate, give that person a certificate in your agency is what we're looking at. Uh, so um, I will push that out to you. I think it's a good thing because God knows we don't ever get enough recognition for what we do. Uh, could never give enough recognition for what we do every day. So uh, this is just one small step in trying to do that. You know, in, in our, our profession, we're, we're notorious for downplaying what we do and just basically saying that's just our job, it's just what we do. But when you do those things, you do them well, you do them every day, you're making a positive impact on people in the field and your citizens. And, um, you know, so what if, if you handle a car chase great and it's what you're supposed to do, you still handle the car chase great. I'm excited by this, and I'm, I'm looking forward to us really getting this up and going. And think outside of that, too. It's IT, yep. managers, um, responders that work well, you know, that you work, I mean, things like that you can recognize. It, it's very limitless on the people that you can recognize. It's just people within our industry, basically. Absolutely. So. Anything else, Roger? Uh, I think that's it for me. Okay, on our new business, we head down for uh, 2019 APCO. We already kind of tra traveled a little bit there, uh, it's going to be in, in Baltimore. Um, anybody that is going to be in Baltimore that's at the uh, international conference, uh, make sure and let us know so we can get together. We want to get you in the picture. Yeah, Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl will, will beat me with a baseball bat if I don't get you out there. we got to get a picture, get that, that stuff done. That's very important. Um, and it is, it's good because, you know, someday down the road, having some historical items about some of the places we were, we've been, the conferences and things are, are very important. So, um, Under old business, we had the state fair. That was something that Cheryl was going to talk about. Yeah, uh, Mary Bingford is the uh, joint chair for the state fair. Uh, we have uh, APCO, Missouri APCO purchased trinkets, uh, namely yellow, thin, thin yellow lines. They didn't have gold. So I purchased thin line, thin yellow line. It still says thin gold. Uh, so we purchased 3,000 of those. We, we voted to do $515, I believe, is what we mm -hmm. voted to spend. I think I spent 500, uh, on 400 and something. So uh, uh, we're still looking to sign up. So sign up if you haven't. Uh, Cheryl said she'd be sending a doodle out yeah, for that. Yeah, so there's supposed to be a doodle for sign up coming out. So sign up. It's, it's late because we're all so freaking busy. Yes. We're yes. doing so many things. Uh, we don't have a theme yet, but we're looking at outreach and still uh, outreach to adults and to children is what they're looking at right now with a theme of uh, basically that we are 911 theme is basically what they're looking at right now. We haven't heard anything back from the presidents because they probably didn't, haven't had a chance to talk about it either. So we meet Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. If you have something else, let Mary Bingford know. If you need her contacts, I've got them. Okay. Um, and I've been, I've been craving pictures because I've got to find out, we, we were thinking about changing over to a new location from the arena to uh, moving over to where the other responders are. And I'm not sure, I think that's happened, but uh, again, I bought a new house, if I didn't mention. And <laughs> I had been moving for a month, but um, I believe that happened. I need to get back with Mary and see what kind, because we'd like to do like a, we talked about doing a, a display screen and just flashing pictures of us. Yeah. So I need yeah. your pictures. If you haven't sent that yet, by God, send it now because I'll use it for the fall conference if nothing else. So send me your <laughs> pictures. My cards are up here. You can email them to me or you can find me on the web. Send me pictures of your people being everyday heroes. Uh, pictures of your center, pictures of outside events with other people, uh, big pictures of your fairs, your rodeos, your all that thing. Uh, send those pictures in. Pictures of you working with cops. Hey, we do it every day. Uh, things like that. Tell them where to Send go. Them in. Get to. Yeah. Tell them week. those officers where to go. There you go. <laughs> there should be plenty of pictures from telecommunicator week, right? Uh, yeah, that would be, be. You would think. Uh, uh, not so much. No. But uh, I'm going to try and start stealing from the web because I, I stalk all of you guys. And <laughs> some of you are pretty good about putting pictures up. So send them to me. Uh, if you can't find me, call me on my name and numbers on the web. And uh, it's pretty easy, roger.martin at msap.bbs.com. It's pretty easy to find it. And we're going to put that together. I'm hoping that will be part of the IM911 display. Just got to figure out if it'll work. And 
we've still got the big blue display, and they're going to put the things about uh, the 17 counties that don't have 91, those sort of things. We're kind of going to. Last year we did kind of an all children outreach, and I don't think that was super popular. So we're going to kind of do half and half this year is what we're looking at. Please, presidents, tell us what you want. I only got okay. involved because I wasn't doing anything. All so right. Yes. No I'm not for me to become fair. a chair. I'll be in Baltimore for the entire stretch of the state fair. I don't get to see them anywhere. Yeah. Sign up. And I think as part of the sign up too, if maybe you only have one person to send, um, you could be potentially partnered with another agency that only has yeah. one person. So don't feel like you can't sign up because you couldn't, you know, fill a whole time slot. But we can try to. Yeah, I've done it with your years by myself, and it's not that because the four hours is not that hard to do by right. yourself. Yeah. My wife usually comes and brings me a soda once in a while, but other than that, you, know, you can do it by yourself if you have to. It's nice to have a couple. Of them. Yes. All right. Anything else on the state fair? All right. The challenge coin contest. That's you, Jack. Still open. You can find the specifications on that contest, again, on our contest page of the website. Uh, what we're looking for, what the board has established of what we're looking for is a design that um, shows off what our membership is and how dedicated we are. So uh, we opened this up last year. The original deadline was February. We got one submission. So. By default, that submission could win. Thank you so much, Zach. <laughs> yeah, I point to Roger because he was the submitter. So, so seriously, you don't have to be an artist. Why did I pronounce it that way? I don't know. You don't have to be an artist to, to do this. Just if you have a design or, or something in your head, put it on a PowerPoint, do some graphic work to where, like, layer upon layer upon layer to where it just kind of looks the way you want it. And then you can send it in and Zach will make it pretty. Sure. I'll make it. <laughs> just just give me more work now. Yeah, I know. Zach 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 will do it for you. But I mean we can we can also send it to to the uh, people. Yeah, the people and they'll do a mock up, an yeah. actual mock up of it. So you don't have to make it pretty, they'll make it pretty for us. That's why we pay them. So uh, we don't have a deadline for wait, did we? It was I think it was a conference, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yes. Again, moapco.org slash contest has all the information on there. <laughs> so I believe the deadline is conference. So it's either conference or the end of October, one of those two. I can't remember. It might have been the end of October. But, um, yeah, so that's that. Okay. Um, the scholarship, or we, we had a scholarship recipient at the, the spring conference who was, uh, was delighted. Um, she would not have been able to attend the conference if she didn't win the, the scholarship. And so... Um, we intend to do it again for the next spring conference, so we want to make sure everybody's aware of that, and we will publicize it heavily at the fall conference. And um, starting next year, we may consider doing a scholarship for both conferences. We're not sure. We'll we'll kind of decide that and see as as we go forward. But um, for the scholarship, we we are paying for um, their hotel. We're paying for their conference. We're paying uh, mileage. If they don't have an agency car that's provided, if they drive their own car, we'll pay mileage. And um, are we doing per diem? I can't remember if we did or not. Yeah, you're doing meals. I think we're doing some meals sort of too. It's so. written into the. It's Essentially, the we, we wanted some. We didn't want somebody to, to be awarded a scholarship where they go, okay, well, I, you know, everything's paid for me to go, but I don't have money to, to pay to eat, you know. So we wanted to cover everything. So that's what we're, we're doing. So salary. Yep, yeah, pretty much. That's it. And so. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity for those places where you know, they're small agencies and, and they just don't have the money to send somebody to the conference. Um, but it's not, it's not uh, restricted to that by any means. Uh, anyone can put in uh, for the scholarship. And so we'll be publicizing that on PS Connect again and talking about it again at the fall conference. And we really want uh, you guys to help us push that out so that people will know. And, and uh, it's especially good for, you know, like I said, smaller agencies for the heads of their agencies to get that information so they'll, they'll know because maybe they'll nominate one of their people uh, mm -hmm. for the scholarship. Or well, maybe an agency neighboring to you that you know does not come to the conference uh, be an outstanding way to have a new agency yeah. introduced Hold to the in. conference. So a lot of opportunities there, so we just want to make sure everybody keeps that in, in mind. So The biggest restriction is it has to be in Missouri. You have to work in work in Yes, you do <laughs> have to, yeah. That is kind of restriction. So, uh, and speaking of being in Missouri, um, 
don't know, was that text or email you got from? Uh, yeah, uh, it was a uh, uh, message on Facebook, actually. We've gone international. Uh, our friend Udell is watching Facebook Live in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Watching our chapter, so hello, and Udell. Unfortunately, we hit our, 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 our sister chapter in Kansas. We hit their state conference same time, same week, or else we would see more people coming from Kansas for this one. I had to apologize. I mean, there was they didn't schedule it to like, you know, a week ago or something. We, so yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Oklahoma's conference same is time. also the same time. It's the exact same days. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, it's just so hard to catch them all. Yes, it's hard yeah. to catch them all, and then it's hard to schedule the hotels because well, you're. you're small, right. They have smaller chapter yeah. conferences, and, and they don't schedule for like until like a month or two out. Yeah, <laughs> it's like um, Oklahoma's is a large conference. Uh, it, it does have a joint APCO and NINA uh, membership. And they've got a large uh, exhibit area as well, and large attendance that they have at their conference. Um, the one thing that we've talked about as a conference committee, and, and Bonnie can chime in on this as well, and that is that um, uh, trying to create some consistency with when we're doing it. So our RFPs going out in the future will target specific dates and give preferential treatment to um, uh, facilities that can host us during those specific weeks. So I know we're trying to focus back on September because October, there it, just for those of you that are not going to all these different state conferences, in the month of October, I can go to, as a commercial partner, I can go to a conference every single week in the month of October, and on certain weeks I can go up to three in that one week. That's how many are going on in just the Midwest, okay? If you look at the Midwest corridor and so therefore these companies have a hard time figuring out where they're going to spend their money well where do we want them to spend their money mm -hmm. right here and so um, when they have to look at splitting that that also means that they may send somebody from an exhibit perspective but they're sending somebody else to another conference for an exhibit so they may cut out their sponsorship and that's one of the things that uh, again has a, has a potential impact for us it hasn't had a huge impact for the fall conference because there's been a demand to be here, but we are looking at trying to uh, go back to a I September. I know you'll always do, it's just hard to find them all. It is. And we're excited about, for the first time, going to uh, Kansas City. We haven't had uh, had that opportunity, so. And honestly, that's just been because, for whatever reason, the venues in Kansas City just have not submitted proposals. It's hard, because so, they're so stinking busy over there. Yeah, this, this was the first year, and, and hopefully this will work out well. So. All right, any other business to come before the, the board? I would like to note, note that our Highway Patrol uh, mobile device guy was selected by NICE as their one of their technology, co-technologies of the year. Okay. We'll be recognized in Baltimore as well. So Good deal. Nice. Y'all come see him. I think that's on Monday or Tuesday. Come find him. Ryan. It is Ryan Backman, our mobile device coordinator, young millennial, <laughs> Seems to be a theme. All right, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor, let's go home. All right. <laughs> Not home, we have more classes after this. Yes, yeah, that's we're, right. We're starting back classes at 1 o'clock. The next meeting will be at the fall conference in Kansas City. Yes. Look at your matrix and see exactly when it's scheduled. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for those that are on Facebook Live.